Daddy Warbucks here, and today we are playing Adventures League. And Adventures League is a style of D&D &D where anybody who has an eligible character is welcome to join us and play. Um, if you're interested in learning how to play D&D &D or learning how to uh, participate in Adventures League events, then join our Discord server. You can find the link in the Twitch chat or in the description down below. Um, at the start of every session, we always like to have the players introduce themselves. That way they know each other and uh, who we have adventuring with us today. So why don't we go ahead and start. Uh, first we have Gura. Okay, uh, I'm Gura and today I'll be playing Frey, a tabaxi sorcerer. And she's a member of the Zentarum. Zentarum. Okay, uh, next is Varus. I am playing Varus. He's a high elf fighter, emerald enclave. Okay, and then Quivers. Hi, I'm Quivers. I'll be playing a third level Tabaxi fighter. And, uh, Faction? In harm. And then, lastly, we have Mender. As Crescent, we are playing Mender, a level 2 Goliath Cleric with the Emerald Enclave. That makes it easy. Emerald Enclave and Zen. Alright, and 1, 2, 3... Who am I missing? I think I'm missing... Me. Yeah, where are you? Pull yourself down here. Uh, do you is he port my character? Oh, that's right. I knew that. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Character creation workshop. And what did you say your name was? Frey. Uh. Hut! <laughs> Disco with the host, how you doing today? There we are, free. And your character... You should now have access to. Good. Now you should have access to. Bam, alright, there's tokens. You're a big token. Uh, that's not good. It's on the calendar. What's on the calendar? I just sent a passive aggressive tweet at my ASP. I'm sure that'll go over great. <laughs> By the way, can you use my new token? What new token? What'd you do? The one, the one I made, uh, like, I don't know, three weeks ago. Did you connect it to your sheet? Yeah, it's in, in the BO tab. All you have to do is drag it onto the tabletop. Ew. Yeah, once you connect it to your sheet, that's your that's your token. Although now I need to associate it things like your hit points and your armor class, and that's all I really care about. What are you again? Human? High elf. High elf, so you have dark vision. You probably want to be able to see, right? Yes, please. Nah. Nah. There you go. Token associated with the sheet. Probably gotta do that with this stupid tabaxi too, huh? Yeah. Man, if only like I had knew this before we started, that'd been great. Mm. 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 Okay, anyway. Um so the story starting today, alright? Um, we are going to adventure outside of the city of Flan. Um, you guys have all wandered close to the uh, to the city of Mole Master. And you know that Mole Master is a much less forgiving city than Flan is. Where Flan is a, an era of culture and there's a relative uh, level of safety because of the oppressive uh, presence of the Blackfist. 
Mole Master is not so much. It's a dog eat dog city, and the the a lot of the the power structure is known for being very corrupt. And uh, you know that while you are in the city of Mole Master, you need to constantly be on your guard because anybody and everybody is against you. Um, now we are starting our adventure with you going to the Traveler's Cloak, which is an inn on the edges of the docks. And um, it butts up against one of the wealthier holdings in Mullmaster. Uh, it caters mostly to wealthy merchants and foreign dignitaries. And the prices on the menu will reflect this. Single rooms can cost as high as 12 gold pieces a night. And the, the price for one of the inn suites are five times that. So as you enter the Traveler's Cloak, is like stepping into a different world from the squalor that surrounds the rest of the docks. Uh, the bar is a single slab of polished marble, and the furnishings within the common room are finely carved and stained oak of the highest quality. Bordering the common area of the Traveler's Cloak are a dozen booths, the benches of which are bedecked in plush upholstery. Each booth features a set of heavy velvet curtains for the sake of privacy, and a small bell that can be rung from inside the booth to summon the waitstaff. You have came to the the Traveler's Cloak because you have found a uh, there are flyers posted all through a Mole Master seeking you to meet with Zora Culkin and you know that she is supposed to be here today Don't everybody speak at once. Not me. So, okay, I'll go to the bar and be like, uh, is, do you know if Zora Culkin is here? The, uh, the bartender kind of points uh, to a corner of the room. You know, most of the booths are empty, um, but at the far side of the room, Surrounded on both sides by empty booths, you are directed to the slender, uh, smooth-faced figure um, with dark hair that is calmly sipping from a goblet of red wine. I shall walk over and ask if she is Zora Culkin. She looks up at you, and uh, she kind of scrunches her face... Um, obviously displeased with being interrupted. Um, you see that she is wearing an ornate breastplate enameled in, in red and uh, like an off-white color. And she has an equally impressive rapier at her hip. Um, she looks up at you and, and she just kind of holds her hand out and gestures to the empty seats across and next to her. I yeah, I take a seat. She 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 uh, gently traces her finger around the rim of her wine glass, and then she begins to speak. <coughs> Clears her throat. She's got a little. <clears throat> she says, "The village of Elmwood, to which my house owns a fair amount." has been reduced to ash and cinders. No physical or magical sign of what causes the destruction has been found. No natural cause was found to be the cause of the destruction, so it is assumed that the damage was caused by a party or person unknown. A single young woman drifted into the Molemaster Bay via the western docks. On a makeshift raft made from logs and timbers and other materials, uh, she was capable only of feverish, disjointed mutterings, and was taken into the custody custody by the soldiery and brought to the house of suffering, a hospice aspirated, aspirated, goddamn, operated by the priests of Ilmater near the South Road Keep. One of my contacts in the city watch has indicated that a high-ranking hawk 
one of the Mole Master's secret police, has set a guard over the woman until she revives. At that point, she is to be remanded into their custody. If she is given over to the Hawks, I will never be able to determine what she knows. So, I am seeking people of a clandestine nature. She must be secreted away tonight, or else it is unlikely that I will ever learn the truth of Elmwood's destruction. And do you think she knows what happened? I do indeed. She, the materials that she was found floating on, also seem to have suffered serious fire damage, indicating that it was from the destruction in Elmwood. Yes, and what what are you willing to pay? Hmm. Well, I can offer you 150 gold pieces if you retrieve the young woman and bring her to Culkin Manor. I would suggest that the job has to be done discreetly. We can't avoid any unnecessary, uh, unnecessary trouble at this time. Can I, uh, can I barter with her? She looks like she's very well dressed and enjoying some nice wine. Maybe she can dole out a little more. You can try. Persuasion? What are you going to say to her? I'll say... You look like you have you have much more money than just 150. 50 gold per person would sound a lot better. Okay, roll a persuasion check. I'll let you know it, it will be extremely difficult. Okay. Alright, that is a failure. Um, she looks at you and she says... 150 gold is way more than rabble such as you should expect. And please, hold your tongue when addressing the noble. Okay, so where was this woman? She is being held in a uh, hospice. It's very much expected that she may expire, but... Um, it's it's run by some of the priests over near the South Road Keep. So you want to want us to infiltrate on this hospice unnoticed. It. Correct. And if by some means you do come into conflict with the guards that are with her it's important that well I would prefer that none were slain it would not be worth the unimaginable hassle it could cause but then again the four of you are not connected to the house so you do what you will Okay, I uh, I think I can accept this offer. Is there anything else you should tell us before we go? Or anything you could give us since I'm not very good at sneaking? Well, I would think that your your best route to trying to get to the woman would be to uh to try and, and talk to the priests. They're generally much easier to convince. And in fact, um, knowing that the Hawks are involved, they probably know what fate will belie this woman in the hands of the Hawks. And they're likely to cooperate if you try to convince them that you have the woman's best interests in heart. Fair enough. As we leave, I'd like to try and I'd like to steal a bottle of wine from the uh, the bar using my feature. <laughs> well, it's not stealing. They're just gonna give it to you. <laughs> They're just gonna. Oh no! Please, no trouble. Just take it. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and this is Mole Master. 
they're already used to uh, that kind of activity. They just chalk it up as an L. Like, fine, just take it. All right, you ready to move on? Yes. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, House of Suffering has the gener following general features. Um, it's a large rectangular building, about 30 feet wide, 50 feet long. Ceilings are about 15 feet high. And it's mostly compose composed of wood. Um, wood planks over hard packed earth, you know, wooden siding. It's very, very unassuming, right? Um, most of it is fur is furnished with bed raggled cots and other makeshift beds. More than half of them are full with injured and infirm. Um, there's little in the way of sophisticated healing equipment here. Uh, it's and it seems like most of the most of the the players players most of the people that are here are just kind of waiting around to die. Um, and the light inside the hospice is very dim. Most of the windows have, you know, iron bars that are on the outside and thick curtains drawn shut. Um, it is evening when you arrive and it makes the dim and gloom inside the hospice so much more. And as soon as you enter into the building, the groanings uh, and shouts of pain coming from many of the people laying around you uh, make for a very unpleasant area. Um, the doors of the squat brick building ahead of you are open, welcoming all into the meager comfort offered within. The two city watch standing near the entrance show only minor interest in your group as you enter. And within the numerous cots and makeshift beds, more than half of which are occupied, six tall iron ca candelabras provide bright light in the otherwise dank and dark room. Um, several people dressed in all gray with gray caps move about the room. A city watch guard leans against the wall next to the bed of one of the patients while his partner has, commande has commandeered one of the few chairs in the room. Uh, with his feet up on the patient's bed, his snores are an odd counterpoint to the groans coming from the other areas of the room. Does it look like this bed, uh, the, the guard is next to it, has the woman on it with the burnt clothes and whatnot? Um... Mm, it's it's hard to determine where the woman is because there are so many beds that are full and um, you might just have to talk to one of the priests no we're not talking I know right what kind of game is this <laughs> uh, okay, so so do I see any priests around yeah I just told you there were several of them working throughout the chamber sorry then I want to talk to one of them. Say, hey, can you come here for a moment? They they walk up and uh, they press their hands together and he kind of bows his head. He says, what can I do for you, my child? Well, <clears throat> we are looking for a woman who arrived here like in really bad shape there are a lot of women here in really bad shape oh uh, yeah mm. uh, <coughs> she was floating on a raft uh, some timber burnt timber mm. You mean her, and he kind of tilts his head behind him, and he gestures to the bed that is surrounded by guards. What business do you have with her? We are here trying to get her out of the guards. 
um, I don't know the word. <laughs> Custody? Uh, yes, at this point, uh, Mender will walk up and say, excuse me, Father. I appreciate your work. I, I'm a brother myself. Priest of Ilmater, we, we are brothers and sisters to all. And he kind of nods. Thank you. I, I myself serve Persephone, and uh, I watch over life. Uh, we were drawn to this task uh, by the Lady Culkin because uh, her interest in the, the woman's circumstances, but further sparing her the fate of being left to the Hawks, should, mm. uh, should it go that way. Well, we would love to assist you in this matter. We know that if she is remanded to the Hawks, uh, she would just as be like she would be just as likely to die as she were to, if she were uh, to have been left floating on that raft. Now, we would love to assist you, but we know not how. What do you plan to do? Well, we've been we've been instructed to be as um, considerate as possible, and we'd like to do this. Um, especially getting in a house of, of pain and suffering and, and trying to ease all of that. We don't want to, to make a fuss. Well, I don't know how um, I, I, I don't know how you plan on uh, getting the guards out of your way, but the only way to move her throughout the city is if you have a, a leader. A um, a device for carrying the sick and injured. We will be happy to provide you with such a tool, but you you have to be absolute care. You have to take the most absolute care in her transport, because she is in a very frail and fragile state. Certainly. Uh, have you, or do you plan to provide her with medical attention that might take her away from the watch of the guard? even for just a moment uh, that is impossible they they will not leave her side they are under strict orders from their commander we we've uh there was an incident earlier just today where we asked the guards to give her some privacy while we tended to her wounds and they refused it was uh quite a quite a mess mm -hmm. I'm gonna look at the um, the little one drinking wine. You think you could share with him? Maybe that would help. The guard, I mean. All right. <laughs> he seems to not pay attention, so I'm going to kind of walk over him and he's passed out. Poke him a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tabaxi passed out drunk. All right. Well, ignoring I'm that, going then. to take his bottle of wine, then. Well, how much <laughs> <Yeah>. is left? <laughs> <laughs> hey, give me that. Just a drink roll. Are you, uh, so are you like just like staring at me blankly? I just I'm trying to understand if you're like passed out or. No, I'm looking around the room. I didn't. I didn't actually hear what you said. What did you say? I was saying. Maybe it might be friendly to uh, the one guard that's awake if you go and share some wine with him. Maybe some generous amount of wine. Okay, sure. I'll walk over and uh, I'll tap one of the guards on the shoulder and say, Hey, friend, this looks like a lonely job. Why, why are you standing over this poor, frail little girl? He, uh, he looks at you. And uh, they they look up, and then they they look to the bottle of wine. And they like, what business is it of yours? Why we are stationed here? I guess it's not any of business. I'm just here visiting family, but uh, I, I couldn't help but notice that you men are quite bored. I do have this bottle of wine. I'll hold it up and I'll shake it. It's pretty full. Say, wouldn't you rather be having some drinks and playing some games? Hmm. 
Make a persuasion check with disadvantage. Ooh, that Thirteen. Okay, so they they look at the wine, they look at you, and they're like, "Yes, we rather we we would much rather prefer being off somewhere drinking wine. Why are we sitting here with a cripple? Uh, an invalid brother. She's not uh, she's not a cripple. She's just wounded. It's all the same. Give me that." And he snatches the wine from your hand. He's like. Come on, let's get out of here. And you see the two of them get up and leave their post. How fun. Well done. That was very effective. I did want to play some cards, though. It's too bad. Some other time, maybe. Okay. Um, the priest walks up. He says... You have to move quickly. I doubt they will abandon their post for long. Okay, so give us the tool to carry her. Okay, uh, he gestures to a couple of the other priests and they quickly come back with what looks like a sheet suspended between two large poles. I'll take the front of it. I'd like to check, make sure that those guards are far enough away that they're not going to notice us. They're out of sight, you know. Okay. Is the girl even alive? <laughs> she murmurs. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take the back side of this. Okay. I'll take it. Okay. As you begin to pick them up, the priests begin to protest. Wait! Careful! Careful! You're going to hurt her! Well, how do we do this, then? I've just, never done this before. Just be very careful. Move slowly. Is there a back door? Yes, yes, this way. Quickly, but slowly. I have an idea. Uh... To be maybe less conspicuous, we could throw a sheet over her, make her look like she is dead. No? Why would you carry a dead person on a leader? They have to be buried, I suppose. Yes, but the dead are usually them. just thrown in a in a wagon. Maybe this one deserves respect. I don't know. Just just quit talking and get her out of here. Yeah, let's go. I'm gonna start moving forward in the direction towards the back door. Moving quickly but slowly. Slowly! Carefully. You're moving too fast. You told us to be fast. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, so, you begin to move through town uh, in the direction of Colkin Manor, where Zora um, will be awaiting for you to return. Um, as you begin to walk through the street, um, the you main see... street. Huh? We're moving through the main street with all the people around. Yep. Uh, as you, you... And they notice, right? So a lot of people are, are you know, uh, paying attention. You see them whispering behind their hands like, what are you doing? Um, and, and you see... Um, one person after like he makes eye contact with you um, Boris and then you see him receive a message from someone nearby like they lean in close they whisper something behind their hand and then this young boy runs off right it, it you can't help but feel a little paranoid with all these pairs of eyes watching you and gossiping do I notice that as well Oh yes, everybody notices. There's no uh, attempt to hide it. I could chase him if you like. There's no time. We just need to keep moving. We may be intercepted though. Keep your eyes peeled. Mm -hmm. As you continue to walk through, you pass a uh, a group of, of thugs standing uh, watching you with daggers in hands. Are but they in our way? 
No, they're just standing off to the side. You get the impression that they're sizing you up, trying to determine whether or not they could, uh, that you would, if you would make an easy pick. I'm going to look to them, and I'm quite large. Mm hmm. Yes, you are. Consider another time, gentlemen. We're in a hurry, and I don't mean to stop. I'll do an intimidation roll. Easy. <laughs> No, no rule is necessary. They're, they're uh, not actually going to attempt to harass you, but he just spits in your direction. Okay. Uh, despite all the eyes and gossip, um, you guys do make it to the house without being... Um, without, without being harassed. And in the dim light of the evening and your unfamiliarity with the neighborhood... You eventually do find Culkin Manor. The three-story manor house features large cream and red banners on each wall, emblazoned with the crest of House Culkin. Once you set foot on the grounds, you notice the interior of the manor house is well lit. A pair of guards at the front of the house nod and open the heavy oaken doors for you, stepping aside to let you pass. You're obviously expected. Upon arriving at the manor, uh, you are greeted by Zora's servant, Dawson. He escorts you to Zora's private study on the second floor. So now you're carrying this, this passed out girl upstairs. I'm sure that'll go well for her injuries. Um, as you enter the room on the second floor, you see as tall bookshelves lining the walls, each full of hundreds of books, tomes, and scrolls covering hundreds of different subjects. An oversized chair sits in the corner beside a table set with an ornate oil lamp. Zora is reclining in the chair, poring over a book when you arrive. I'm glad you've returned, she says, setting the book down. Dawson, please prepare rooms for the young woman and our guests. Once you've done that, I am sure you could find something for them to eat. And he kind of nods a, a very low and gives a very low bow and says, yes, my lady, and goes off to uh, take care of everything. Uh, while he's doing that, I'm going to um, check her wounds and see if I need to uh, give her any care. Can I do a medicine check? Um, well, and before you do that, Zora is going to turn to the two of you that are carrying her. Says, I need you to go with uh, Dawson and... Uh, you know, take the unconscious woman, secure a place for her to rest. Oh, but look, yeah. do just that. Before we go, you might want to know that we were seen by some man and a boy that left with a message. Of course you did. There are eyes everywhere in Mullmaster. It is of no importance. Well, you will be satisfied to know we did this without causing any violence. Well, that is good eyes and rumors we can deal with but if there were was violence that would be again much more of a mess than I would be willing to to deal with I'll follow the servant okay um, so Dawson takes you to to another room it's a very nice room and uh, instructs you to place the woman onto the bed. Um, she looks extremely hurt. Now you said you wanted to do a medicine check? Yeah, I'll, I'll turn to him and say, lend me a hand. Are you any good with medicine? He looks at you and he just turns around and leaves, going about preparing the other rooms as instructed by his lady. Uh, you there. You help me. That's no, not... Who, who was the other... Yeah, Varys was the other one carrying the woman, right? Yep. Okay. I'll do what I can. Alright, so when you examine the young woman, you see that she has many cuts and bruises, and that she has ex suffered extensive burns over much of the right side of her body. Worse still, it's likely she's lost her right eye, judging by the bandages that cover it. Um, as you examine the woman and try to determine you know what you can do to to help her wounds you can see the remnants of a curious tattoo that has been partially burned away what does it look like um 
it looks like a version of the old Kandathan, which is a language that that modern day common is based off of. Um, but being based being the fact that common is based off it, everybody can generally understand it, and you think it's the word for flame. I'll point it out. I have no idea what this means, but there it is. Take a picture with your smartphone. <laughs> what? What? The thing. <laughs> My immersion! <laughs> what? Uh, am I able to help her at all, at least um, with medicine? Yeah, um, a medicine check. Um, like, I, I don't know. Tell me what you intend to do. Uh, change her bandages, address any wounds that have reopened in the travel. Okay. Um, you can certainly do so, but do you have a medicine kit? Because um, <laughs> I don't know how I'm you just... intend to change her bandages without a medicine kit. <laughs> I thought I did. Let me check my pack. Does the lady of the house have any healing herbs or anything like this? You could go ask. Where is that path? I want to go and find him. Okay, the, the butler again ignores you as he continues going about his chores. You there. This woman needs healing. Do you have any kind of healing herbs? Healing herbs? Yes. Is that you know, a something to make a salve out of? Is that a thing that exists? Like aloe vera, you know? <laughs> for sunburn. I basically what he's trying to ask is do you have a potion of healing? No. Why would we keep something like that on grounds? Well, you seem Why would you not have something like that? It's a very good item to have. If anyone under the lady's care were to be hurt, she would simply go purchase the necessary the necessary healing. That is the way of things. You are no help. Where is your lady? In the room where you left her. Would someone like to come with me? I'm staying with the woman. I don't have a healer's kit right now. Aren't you a cleric? I know. I'm a fighter <laughs> cleric, though. <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I picked one up before I left. I, I didn't purchase it. I haven't paid a lot of attention to this character. <laughs> okay. I'm going to head to the ladies' room. Okay. And I say, she is in bad, she is in bad shape. We found a tattoo on her skin denoting a flame or something like that. Might have something to do with the fire. I don't know. This is magic stuff. I am a fighter. Very... She is in bad shape. She needs a healing potion. Very interesting. Well, we need... Uh... We need her awake. And did you not get supplies from the priests? We got a carrying thing. That's about it. You didn't ask them for a healing potion? I I was taking care of the guards that were surrounding her. <laughs> I didn't ask for excuses. Well, if you don't have a healing potion, then we'll need someone with either skill in in uh, medicine or maybe some type of magical healing to wake her up. But I need her awake. He leaves. He just doesn't say anything. He leaves. He, he, he's mumbling on, on his way out. Who does not keep a healing potion on hand? It's just crazy. <laughs> Head back to you guys. What did you say? She needs to wake up, and she doesn't <laughs> have anything that can help. Well, we were unprepared as well. I'll cast uh, Cure Wounds on her. All right. 
You could do that the whole time. <laughs> yes, he could. All right. <laughs> um, as you, the healing magic enters her body, you can see some of her wounds begin to stitch together, and she begins to stir from her sleep. Um, as she does, even the, as she does, you know, she has suffered a great amount of damage, and she kind of stirs and she mumbles the words fire and ash before succumbing to sleep once more well she's stable for now I suggest we return to uh, the lady of the house. She will need her sleep. Okay. So returning to um, Zora, she looks to you and she says, I appreciate your, your help in the matter. Um, maybe once the lady gets some rest, we can talk with her in the morning. Uh, I've arranged for all of you to have a place to sleep and a meal for the night. You are free to go about the manor as you wish. Could I also request that you send someone to purchase a healer's kit? I will I will pay for it. I just want to be able to tend to her should she need it. Uh, I would be more than happy to do so, but I doubt any merchants will be open at this late at night. First thing in the morning is fine. First thing in the morning. Okay. And then what are you guys going to do? She's gonna let us eat and relax, right? Yeah. Go get dinner. Okay. Um, so you guys have your meal. You relax for a bit. And then... Uh, it's quickly approaching very, very late. It's like 11 p.m. Are you guys going to sleep for the night, or...? Uh, I'm going to go to the room they've prepared. I am going to set up a sleeping bag in the room that the injured lady is in. Okay. Alright. Varus, free? I'll go sleep in my room. Me too. You're gonna go sleep in his room too? There's only one room? <laughs> what? No. No. Because <laughs> he said, I'm gonna go sleep in my room, and then he said, Me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> too. like, he I is also going also. to go sleep in your room. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you guys go to sleep for the night, right? Everybody's have a nice rest. Job well done. Um, however, the night's silence is shattered by a loud crash elsewhere in the manor. The sounds of shouting and clomping boots can be heard reverberating through the house. What the hell is happening? I'm gonna get up and head out to her room. Okay, um... You can't quite make it to her room immediately, right? Because, hearing the noise, all of you are gonna jump up, you're gonna run out into the hallway, and then... Um, and then, oh, I see, I see, I see. Trying to find the place. Okay. Um, as you run out into the hall, you see that there are four bandits that are there. And they're looking around. Ah, uh... oh, come on now. I thought I already grabbed your tokens. There we go. Alrighty. 
I don't know why that is still there. Um, <laughs> four bandits have appeared, and you see them. They're they're running through the mansion. They're throwing stuff on the ground, and they're they're shouting, "Where is she? Where is she?" Oh my god. So, give me one second. Go ahead and everyone roll initiative. Is it still well lit in the hall? Um, sure. Why not? I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Dark vision. Wait, can you not see? I no, can't I see anything. Been. That's because... Why not? There you go. Alright. Uh, one, two, three, four. Let's add my bandits to initiative. And... Frey, you are first. Okay. Frey is going to... throw a firebolt on one of the bandits. This one. Okay. Yay. <laughs> and then we'll that one <laughs> damage. Okay. Uh, after that, bandits will take their turn. You see that the bandits, they, they are each carrying a torch and they're also carrying a club, right? Um, and as they, uh, I'm sorry, a torch and a scimitar. As they run through the manor, they've been uh, lighting fire to the curtains, to the tapestries. So a lot of things are, are burning here, right? And they're going to run forward and they're going to slash at you with the scimitar in their offhand. And let's just put you guys inside squares like the, like so. There you go. So they're going to run up. No. Right there. Uh, right there. All right, and they're going to slash you two in the front. They're in bad, bad shape. So they're going to slash uh, twice at Quiver. One hit for three damage, and then once at Mender, which is a miss, and once at Varus, which is also a miss. All right, so many misses. Mender. All right. Um, so you cowards have no place here. Leave now while you're alive. I'll cast a bonus action, Shield of Faith, and then I'll swing at the one on top. I don't think I have the spell on the front, though. No. Only attacks and, and heals go on the front. <coughs> okay. So, Shield of Faith, and seven is a miss. That's my turn. Varus? I shall move here and try to stab. Nope. Okay, that's it. Cover. I'm just going to attack. That is a hit. Was that above you? No, below. Okay. For 11, that is a dead bandit. Finished. Um, I'll also move around to the opposite side. Frey again. 
ready move in here and fire bolt again on this guy this time the old seven that's a little bit better yeah <laughs> that's it okay why is it making that face go on there all right the bandits will take their turn um first same as before attacking here there and there so quiver uh, and then uh mender and varus all right so quiver's the only one that got hit for six why is quiver i don't see a bar here and it doesn't matter mender uh i'm gonna attack the one that got hit by the firebolt 12 is a hit, and that will kill another of the bandits. And that's my turn. Burris. Move and stab. Hit for 13. Dead bandit. That's it. Quiver. Short sword. Hit. Bonus action, uh, second wind. Okay. And then Frey. Frey, move here and use her firebolt. And that's it. This second one, one D ten. Plus, at is it brackets level? I think it is. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Now, now that button will auto update as you level up. Okay. I still take go. the ten, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Still take, still heal for the okay. uh, for the ten you rolled. But now you can just hit that button. There you go. All right. Um, so bandit's dead. What are you gonna do now? As as you stand there, you can hear crashing and shouts come from other areas of the house. Uh, head towards her room. Who her? Zora or the injured woman? The injured woman. Um, I don't know if you guys want to loot them, but I'm I'm heading straight there. Yeah, me too. I will quickly loot them. <laughs> they don't have anything. You're not looting nothing. Um, Dang it. Running and sweat putting out the fire. Okay. Um, when you go into the injured woman's room, you see that there are a group of men in there, and they are accompanied by Rossum the butler. And they look to be like they're getting ready to, to pull the woman out of bed and take her away. What is the meaning of this? <laughs> they look at you. And then they, uh, they draw their weapons. Does the butler look like he's afraid? He is very much afraid. Mm, okay. Does it look like he's with the bandits? No, it looks like they forced him to come here. Can I insight the DM? He... He's afraid. <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? 
I know what you want me to tell you. Roll initiative. <laughs> I kind of want to throw a... Uh We want to throw a hard encounter on us. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. All right. You so as you guys are here, that. you see uh, Cultus burst through one of the windows. There's the cultist. Yikes. We found them. <laughs> yeah, you guys will be fine. Do we know what cult this one's nope. from? They just you just see men in big cultisty robes with uh with masks on burst through the window. Uh, I should not. Not him. One, two, three, four. Here we go. Alright, Frey, you're up first again. What the heck is your initiative? Okay, so let's see. I'll move to here and then I'll cast Burning Hands on this direction. Right? Okay. Then after that, I'm going to use my trait to run. So we need dex checks from the three. One, two, three. Pass, fail, pass. So the pass are going to take half. And if they fail, they are going to die. Finished? Yes. All right. Uh, up next is the two men that you've seen enter uh, at first. And as they pull out their weapon, you see that they are their weapons are coated in something green and viscous, right? It's very sticky and thick, almost like the consistency of like a, a honey or sap. And they are going to run forward. Maybe. Run forward. And the first one is going to slash out at uh, Varus. Is 16 a hit? That's my AC. Alrighty. So he hits you for 6 damage. And then I need you to make a con save. Um, then he's going to slash at you again oops slash at you again 12 is a miss the next yep. one is going to slash at Mender and slash at Quiver I don't ever have any problem hitting you but I can't hit the rest of the party <laughs> All right, Men or Quiver is taking four damage, and you need to make a con save. All right, and then it's the Cultist's turn. Uh, oh no. Oh no. Cultist is going to go here, there, there, there. So he doesn't get a sw uh, swipe from, from the big Goliath. He's very scary. Alright, so first one here 
is going to attack Frey. And next one is going to attack uh, Mender. The last one is going to attack, and watch this one hit, Quiver. No, okay, fine. I was wrong. Sometimes it's good to be wrong. Uh, after that, it is Quiver's turn. Just a short sword on that. Um, action surge. 16 will hit. Roll damage. Discord broke again. 7 damage will kill the cultist, and then it's going to be Varus' turn. Stab with the one with the icky blade. Stab the one with the icky blade, that is a stab. Okay. I think I shall also use my action surge and try again. Like the whole party made of fighters? 13 is a hit? <laughs> oh, you're an Eldritch Knight, right? Not yet. Not yet. Soon? Okay. That's it. Uh, Aku on. Akan. All right. I think Akan. I don't know. I. I Akan Mender Kathana Wavi. The third. It's a mouthful. That's what she said. Ho oh, ho. And I missed. Yes, you did. Missed very badly. It's a payoff. I don't hit very hard, but I don't get hit. All right, Frey. Frey is going to move here, then try to grab this man's mask and shock, shocking grasp. Oh no. Uh, okay, so you grab him like right by the face and just electrocute him, and then move here, and that's it. Am I missing something? Because he's going to take a swipe at you. Mm, sh shocking Grasp, I think, takes his reaction. That's what I'm missing. I, think. <laughs> I didn't think it... I thought Shocking Grasp was advantage if they're wearing metal. Can't take reactions. Oh, you're right. Okay. Yes. So, now the spies are going to take their turn again. And uh, they're going to slash again. At Varus. Hit for four and then a con save. That is a pass. Uh, attack Varus again. Jesus. Hit for three and a con save. Alright, so now you are poisoned. Okay? But the special property of this poison is that it also renders you unconscious. Wow. Yes. Do you want to know the duration? Five billion years. Uh, might as well be. Ten minutes. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's an eternity. Alright. Uh, next one... It's going to attack Mender. Miss. Going to attack Quiver. Hey, take six Quiver. <laughs> and then make a con save. If he's even, is he here? He is. And basically immune. Yeah, basically. And then the cultists are going to take their turn. Someone is going to flank around. And then they are going to both attack Mender. 
he's too big and healthy, and they don't like it. Uh, there is a hit for two. Ah, barely. Yeah. <laughs> and then a miss. Quiver. All right. I'm going to focus on the sailor guy, or the spy, I guess. Uh, I failed the concentration check to keep my shield. Okay. That's a miss. Ignore that second one. Okay. Varus is asleep. <laughs> Mender, what would you like to do for your turn? Uh, I want to hit the spy that's wounded. Alright. Nope. It's like, is that like my third nine on attacks tonight? I know, I know. Uh, just, yeah. Alright, uh, Frey? Frey is going to shoot a firebolt at the spy. That is a hit. And then move here. And that's it. The spy will take its turn. It is going to step away from you, uh, Mender. So you get to take an opportunity attack. <laughs> the, the messed up thing is I've been watching a lot of Critical Role lately, season two. The nine has followed me. <laughs> the nine. <laughs> oh, the that's... Spy is going to try and hit Frey. Miss. Miss. Oh my god, you're so lucky. Second one, attacking Mender. And, yep, all misses. Cultists, they're both going to attack Mender again, trying to knock that Goliath down to size and fail. And then Quiver, it's back to you. Alright, I'd like to try a trip attack on the spy. Okay. So I'll roll your attack. Ooh. Can't stop yawning. 16 is a hit. So then... Oh god. What? Just trip. Yeah, but what's with all the You it's have all one You gotta roll your D six. Alright, so total and damage. The superiority die as well. Oh that's what the six was. It was your damage. Yeah, roll your superiority die. Just one. Seven damage total. And then needs to make what is it? Contested strength check? No. Save. Pass. Dang it. All right, Varus is still sleeping. You hear that fan knocking? Piss me off. Alright. Uh Mender. I'm finally gonna hit something. I'm gonna hit the spy. Hey, you did it, buddy. I got one. What the heck is that? Hold on, this is gonna drive me crazy. I think that's better. I don't know if it actually is or not. <laughs> Alright, hit and done. Yeah, that's my turn. Frey? Frey is going to take out one dagger and try to boop it on the, the guy. That is a hit. And that's it. 
And then the spies are going to take their turn again. Because he's still kicking. Attack Frey. Mender. Mender. Nope. Cultist. This one here. Tired uh, uh, and frustrated from failing to be able to attack. Being able to attack uh, Mender. He's going to attack Varus now. He's going to take the easy hit. So, advantage. It is a hit. Being unconscious. So, now it's a crit then? Yep. And that's two. Oh, no, wait. So, you're taking eight damage. Oh. Womp womp. <laughs> Second one. Uh, oh, that was a spy attack. I, I was on the wrong sheet. It should have been a cultist scimitar. At which that would have missed. So you are you are not dead. That's my fault. You're also still unconscious. Still sleeping. And poisoned. Yep. All right, there you go. Uh, so that was the one cult. The second cult is going to attack Quiver. Missed. And Quiver, it is your turn. Spy, one more time. Uh, trip attack. All right, roll damage. And then your D8. Your superiority dice aren't very superior. Yeah, I know. And DC 13 strength safe. Oh, come on. <laughs> Two net 20s. Yep. I'm good at this game. Hex. Varus is still asleep. Mender. Hacking the spy. It's a hit. Oh man, he's still going. Alright, that's it. Frey? Frey is going to take out another dagger and take a hit, attack. And, and he goes down. Okay, and then she will throw it on one of the cultists, this this guy here. You can't you can't dual wield and throw your, your offhand. It's only No. No, you can only throw you can only make a offhand melee attack. Okay, then I'll move in and do the, the there you attack. Go. So 16 is a hit for one. And then that's it. Alright, uh, the one remaining spy. He's out for blood. Let's attack uh, Quiver twice. Not with advantage. Alright, both miss. Cultist here. Going to stab at Mender. Still. Miss. And then Quiver. Okay, long story, or short sword. To the spy. And dead. I'm good, I'm done. Still sleeping. Mender? I'm going to grapple the spy in front of me. Spies are dead. And hold him. Or not spy, the cultist. Okay. That's just athletics, right? Yep. Contested strength checks. You are not going to grapple the spy. Uh, for now. So let's try and keep one alive. Alright, free. Again. Dagger, dagger. Both miss? Fail. That's it. Cultist. Attacking Quiver and Frey. Quiver. Frey. Frey? Miss. 
Alright, quiver. Thirteen. Uh, thirteen. Is it? Five. I was gonna say, how is your AC so high? But then I seen your uh, draconic sorcerer. Yeah. I'm done. All right, Varus still sleeping. It's a long nap. <laughs> it is a long nap. It's not even been a minute yet. <laughs> Uh, Mender trying to grapple <laughs> still for some reason. I don't get it, buddy. Uh, failed. Oh my gosh. Free? Again, two daggers. If one kills it, uh, it's just. Hey, not, just first know. attack. Let's... Hit and dead. Knockout. That's it. Cultist is going to stab at Quiver. God, worthless. Quiver. And that will finish the Cultist. Wow. All right. Those other friend looking. What other friend? Her sleeping friend. He's sleeping. That's what he looks like. <laughs> can I try yeah. to wake him up? Absolutely, what does he have you in can. His pocket? Yeah, if, if you're gonna wake him up, he wakes up. That, wake that's all it up. took. Wake me up inside. No, none <gasps> of that. <laughs> all right. Uh, as the last cultist falls, you hear yet more screaming coming from somewhere else in the manor. Let's go to Zora. Running. Fast. Are we just going to leave her here? Yeah. Did those spies have any more of that poison? No. Oh, they never do. I mean, technically... yeah, somebody should protect this this uh, person that we're all trying to protect. Our job is done. We don't. I mean, we just need our payment. Yeah, and she might be dying right now. So. So you're going to Zora's room. Yes. All right. Um. When you run to Zora's chamber, you find her slumped over the table where you had last seen her. Her book is still open and the the lantern still lit. She awake? Alive? <laughs> she's asleep. Well, it looks like she's asleep. Could be dead. Could be alive. I don't know. Okay, let me check here. Hey, miss. Are you alive? Medicine check. Hmm. Seems like. <laughs> Could be dead. Is Can she I go dead? take a look? Yeah, man, there. Take a look. I don't know what I, I'm doing. I don't know. Yep. My god, is she breathing? Just check she's, if she's breathing. She's totally dead. <laughs> Can I go check if she's breathing? If you, if you really want, yeah. Medicine check! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Varus, three, three out of four party members have come to the conclusion that she has passed away. <laughs> I should look for money. You find nothing! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> oh, then I guess I'll try to see if she's still breathing. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh. I must have poisoned. Um. Yeah, nope. I don't know. Let me check that poison again. Because it's not traditional poison. Yeah. 
Yeah. No. No, the poison only makes you go to sleep. You're not poisoned. So, 18. You can tell that she is breathing, but it's very, very shallow. It's obvious that she also has been poisoned. Guys, she's been, she's been poisoned, too. She's alive. It'll wake her up. Uh, try as you might to, to wrestle her awake. She is still unconscious. Well, she's probably fine here. We need to go and figure out what's going on with the rest of the mansion. So what happened to the butler? Uh, he ran when the fighting started. Is there anything in her study that we'd want to maybe just take and blame it on the cultists? No. Once again, that's not how this works. Millionth time. Are we still here? No, yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're shouting it's from good. somewhere else in the in the manor. Well, let's go. Let's follow the noises. Can I carry this one with us? Carry what? Can I carry the lady with us so that we're not leaving her alone? Uh, how how effective do you think you'll be in combat if you're carrying a lady? drop her when we get there. What's the purpose of carrying her out of the room? There's cultists everywhere. She's probably safer here. If, if they think she's no threat, they would have killed her already. Okay. We're okay. heading towards the noise. Heading towards the noise. It's, yeah, everybody's having Discord issues. Alright, uh, as you guys, as you guys are, uh, you running towards the source of the noise, you burst into a room and you find yourself face to face with a horrific sight. You see three creatures that appear to be made entirely of flame and lava. And they are running about the room, destroying the furnishings, lighting things on fire. And they uh, are covered in stinking, burning remnants of what looks like muck and mud. Um, everybody go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, that's a sad initiative roll. All right, you're up first, Mender. Charging in, I'm gonna hit the one on top. Twelve. Twelve is a miss. All right, that's my turn. All right, uh, free. Mm. Free is going to, yeah, just throw a firebolt on one of the creatures. Okay, your firebolt hits it. But you see that the flames just kind of lick around its body, composed of fire, and uh, the creature seems to enjoy the tickling of your, of your warmth. Okay. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> All right, Quiver? All right, I'm going to back up to about there. I'm going to take out my longbow and shoot the top one. Mm. All right, it is a hit. 
finished. Hold on. Boris. Well, I do not want to get anywhere near these flaming creatures, so I'm gonna back up too and pull out my longbow and shoot. <coughs> Another hit. Which one? The wounded one. And then I'll also use my okay. second wind. Um, that is going to reduce the magmen to zero. When it does, you see its face twist into a, a look of shock and horror, and its form begins to bulge. Right? As it does, it bursts in a gout of flame, and I'm going to need Mender to make a dexterity save, please. That is a fail. So you are going to take seven fire damage. Um, I am going to shrug it off. Well, I shrug off four of it. Yep, take three fire damage. Sorry. Finished. Yes. I mean, right, someone's got to take the hit. So. Start of your turn. I need you to make a con save. What on? <laughs> <laughs> Is that three ones in a row? I may. Yep. It's three ones in a row. Yep. All right, you are poisoned. Because they, sm they smell really bad. Fine, whatever. Next. <laughs> Afraid? <Afraid>? Nine. <laughs> mm. Frey is going to take out one light crossbow and shoot at the creature. And that's it. Okay. Next, quiver. Hey, wait a minute. I deleted the <laughs> the magman that was in the turn tracker. They never even got to take their turn at the end of last round. So I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, okay. They're just gonna make melee attacks versus Mender, miss and a uh, hit. So, Mender, you'll take 10 fire damage. And then... You're also on fire. <sighs> Alright, so now, Quiver's turn. You're going to fire a longbow at which one? Bottom one. It's a hit. And I'm done. That will reduce that magman to zero, so it is going to explode again. Uh, <laughs> take nine. <laughs> take, <laughs> take nine fire damage, Mender. Uh, that's not enough to kill me, but I am down, and I'm still burning down. Or does it douse no, when I go down? No, you're still burning and poisoned. <laughs> oh god, this is a bad, bad way. Uh, Varus. Uh oh. I'll move here and can I try to taunt the creature? Um. Okay. What are you gonna. How are you going to do that? Walk me through this. I'm like. Try to get his attention by shouting really loudly, Bro, you're on fire, come here, I'll put you out. That's not very intimidating. Or I'll shoot you. Oh. <laughs> 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 Alright, roll a, uh, I guess, persuasion check. Right. I would say that's not very successful. Damn. Finished? Yes. Magman is going to take its turn. Uh, 
it is going to leave. Not because of, uh, not because you want it to, because it wants to. And it's going to try to give you a boopin. It misses. Alrighty. Um, all right. So first thing's going to happen, right? You're still burning. You're going to take three fire damage, which will equate a failed death save. Right? And then you're going to make a death save for your turn. Oh. Oh. That's real bad. Yeah, that's not looking good for me. All right, Freak. Okay, can I use my action to douse the fire on Mander? Yes, that's exactly what it says. Until okay, a creature there. takes an action, douse the fire. Okay, so I will do that. And that's my turn. All right, Quiver? I'm going to hold my action. I'm going to yell at Varus. I say, get out of there. And uh, on when he does, if he does, I'm going to attack the Magman. Okay. And the next Varus? Disengage. Okay, so he steps away. You can go ahead and try to shoot the Magman. That is a hit. And the Magman will die and burst and hit nobody. Wait. Nobody? Yay. Good teamwork. Oh, so you're just outside the rage. Okay. Ah, I didn't mean to clear it. So who was yeah. after Frey? No, it's... Quivers, and then Varus, and then Mender. All right, well, Varus uh, just moved. That was his turn. So it would be Mender's turn next. Right? So he has to make a death save before anybody would get the opportunity to stabilize him. Alright, boys, it's been real. Here we go. <laughs> feeling lucky? <laughs> no. No, this has not been a lucky day for me. Ooh. You can do it. Okay, oh my so he succeeded. So now, af after that, it goes to Quiver. Or no, it go to Frey first. Yeah, let me try it. Make a medicine check. And he's stable. Oh, oh my <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> just, just, just a question, Daddy. Um, do new characters get a healing potion? No, not new characters. No? Okay. New players. New players. Whenever okay. a player no joins, does Adventure League for the first time, they they fulfill a DM quest, and the reward gives them a potion. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, with that encounter ending, however, it seems that the, you know, the noise throughout the manor has subsided. Uh, however, the bigger problem here is that there is fire all throughout the mansion, and the manor is going to burn. Uh, the walls are engulfed in flames, and the higher spaces near the ceiling are clouded in smoke. We need to get everyone out of here. But there's only three of us. Yeah, and you have to carry a Goliath, the unconscious girl, and uh, Zora. What are you going to do? Uh, thinking, thinking. Can I try to carry this guy? He is very heavy, but you manage to less carry him, more drag him outside of the mansion. Good enough. I guess I'll go for Zora. Okay. So that leaves me with the other girl? Yep. And do you guys split up while you go carry these people? Go get and carry these people out, or do you like go as a group? We, we split. We split. Okay. The house is on fire, so we split. Okay, that's actually 
Um, the, each of you, oh my god, each of you will suffer 11 fire damage as you navigate through the burning house. Uh, Frey, and she just went AFK. Come on. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, Frey, you take 11 fire damage. Um, I'm down. Yes, and who are you going to get? The other girl that was... <laughs> okay. Down. So you get the Goliath outside safe. The uh, Zora is outside safe. But Frey has not came back yet. Can I scale the outside of the building and enter through the window that the cultist came in through to check on the girl? Why would you need to go through the window? Because I, if I went through the house, I'd get hurt. And I have a climb speed. If you go into the house, you're going to get hurt. It's on fire. Like you're gonna get hurt going in through the window, just the same as you would if you go through the through the stairs. Oh okay. <laughs> Do I see anyone outside? No. Well I can't go back inside. I would just end up like them. Yeah, yeah, it's up to uh It's up to quivers and do you rescue Frey or do you rescue Zora well I already rescued Zora oh the, it's the injured girl that's still inside yeah okay so do you rescue her or do you rescue Frey I will go for Frey okay so you're gonna run in through the house gonna grab Frey drag her out um you are going to take damage, but I already checked your health, and there's no way that this would reduce you to death because it's a D6 and you're on seven. So you take one more fire damage rushing through the house, you get Frey outside to safety. And so now, um, Zora is, uh, you know, still unconscious, and <laughs> um, while the fire continues to burn down the manor, what is everybody going to do? It's the middle of the night, and uh, yeah, she's stable. Any ideas? How far is the uh, hospice? Uh, other side of town? Okay. <laughs> okay. You you can drag you can go to the hospice if you'd like. I mean most of your party is injured and the priests are friendly. That's my idea. Okay. Well there's two of you and you gotta drag three people. <laughs> Short rest? All right, doesn't matter. Uh, the following morning, Zora, is, she wakes up, and um, after hearing what all occurred at the, at the mansion, she decides that she's going to reward the party for trying to defend the manor. Um, she says that uh, that. You know, she'll return to you shortly. And uh, even though she is sick from smoke inhalation and has minor burns, um, she's relatively unharmed. And she goes into town. Uh, the rest of you are going to stay at the hospice, nursing Frey and Mender back to health. And she returns shortly. Uh, she says that her informants within the Lord's Alliance have told her that they the injured woman, Ravia, had disappeared. Uh, her corpse was not found within the fire, and it's assumed that the cultists were successful at retrieving her at some point. Um, 
Uh, she says that there's a series of wagon tracks indicate that a wagon was parked beneath the windy window of Ravia's room and that they lead away from the manor. Other members of the Lord's Alliance have tracked the wagon's passage to the ghettos of Molmaster uh, on the southern edge of town, and the trail went cold from there. Despite a couple hours of searching, they were unable to find the wagon or its occupants. Two most obvious methods of tracking down the kidnapper's destination are following the tracks left by the wagon or questioning any of the saboteurs uh, if they were left alive. Obviously, they were not because they, they were burned. Um, so, she, she looks around, says that there's still work to be done. Well, we could do that, but we need some rest first. Oh, obviously, of course. I wouldn't mean to uh, to suggest otherwise. You know, the the heal yourselves takes a much needed rest, but we'll be setting out in midday. So it's you it's a, a reward. It's a long rest. I'm back. I'm back, baby. So I mentioned the reward. Yeah, it it'll be part of the party gold at the end of the session. Right. Do we have to roll hit dice on a long rest, or do we just cap out? No, hit rest. You you go back to full, or long rest. You go back to full. Can we talk to the priests of Illmater and ask them if they have a healing potion for us? <laughs> a little late for that. Damn. What if I say pretty, please? Um. Then it. I'll tell you to shut up. <laughs> Kappa. Only if you say pretty, can, please. Can I buy a dealer's kit off of them? Yeah. Just subtract the gold and add it to your sheet. Perfect. Five gold. Alright. So you guys spend the first half of the day resting. It is now about 3 p.m. You ready to head to the ghetto? Yes. I think so, yeah. Okay. I can't stop yawning. Sorry. Go to sleep. I can't. <laughs> Alright. Um, when you begin to travel through the gritty, squalid streets of the ghetto... Um, you find that most people here regard you with, uh, with a mixture of annoyance and disdain. Um, you see many, many people here who bear the symbols of the Zentarum and, um, that is where you are. You're in this, you're in the middle of the, of the streets here. Don't really know where to go. Can I approach one of the the, the people on the ghetto and show my Zentarin token thing? I don't remember. I You're not a Zentarum. You told me you were Oh, there are Zentarums! Lol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then I'm gonna read the other section now. <laughs> I thought it was uh, L.A. and E. Anyway. All right. Uh, as you show your badge, their expression turns from uh, from annoyance to acceptance. They say, "Oh, hello, brother. How uh, how can I serve you today?" We are tracking a maybe a caravan that was carrying a 
injured girl. An injured um, girl. Yes. I think it was some protests. It's related to Zura Koken. Hmm. Mm -hmm. do, do, do you have any information oh, about that? You know, I'm, it's, I wish I could help you, brother. Just my memory is so hazy. I wish there was something that could help me remember more clearly what exactly I had seen or not seen. Oh, of course. Take this and I uh, give it one gold coin. And he looks down at the coin and then looks back up at you and says, Oh, you know, I am starting to remember something. It's not quite not quite there yet, but I mean I I, I kind of remember a wagon with a girl. Okay, I get you. Take this and then I give more uh four more. Four more. Four so coins. you have five gold. He's like, Oh right, right, yeah. And the girl had some gnarly burn marks on her side yes I did see it uh, they went to the ruined temple of Siric ruined temple of Siric Siric where it's, is that? Uh, well it's here it's here it's on the uh, northern end of the uh, of the Zintarum district and uh, you, you know shouldn't have a trouble finding it keep a big burning flame outside the front Hmm. Thank you. So, what have you learned? We I found out that she might be on a, a temple near here to the north. We might want to go there and check out. Nicely done. Well, that's go then okay uh, you find the temple without without difficulty but you can see it's been ruined for decades uh, gaining entry into the temple is as simple as walking through the front door and every window has been broken decades ago and boarded over and the boards themselves have been removed for firewood allowing daylight into the ruined structure the pews suffered a similar fate, many of them broken apart, and then you can see heaps of, of small kindled bonfires around. And uh, the and the only braces in the floor indicate where any seating ever existed. Um, only one remnant of Sirik's worship remains. The sacrificial altar to the former Lord of Murder is still there. Destroying pews is one thing. But none are desperate or crazy enough to try stealing the marble altar. It is because of the weight of Sirik's unholy reputation that the hidden temple um, has been untouched. Does this altar have like a bowl in it? Or is it just a statue? It's just, well, the altar is literally just a slab. And when you walk up and examine it, you can see that there is an opening. Does it look like a keyhole? No, no, no. Like, like an opening, like a door set into the flooring. Ah, oh, shoot. Do you need thieves' tools to check for traps? No, that would just be perception or investigation. Nope, no traps here. Safe. We should proceed. Quietly. I'll I'll hold up the back then. I'm not quiet and I'm sure they're expecting us. So marching order something like that. All right. you. Immediately when you head down into these depths. You can see that the construction is much, much different from the ruined temple up above. Um, the chamber underneath the temple is exquisitely made. Seems to be of dwarven manufacture. Um, none of your dwarves. 
and you can see that there are a number of braziers set around the room and to the wall that are unlit and empty. And as you journey through the, the, the dark, uh, through the dark tunnel, see that there are five wa foot wide runes covering the wall in orderly rows. Although they appear to have been carved into the wall, um, closer examination reveals that they've been burned into the stone with remarkable precision. And so, what? It's all dark in here, right? There's no lit torches. No, there's only the light from the outside. Do we all have dark vision? No. I'm going to light a torch just for consistency. <laughs> okay. What? Common draconic yet to choose? What is that? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> Half acid. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay. So, after looking through your sheets, nobody can understand what the runes mean. Uh... Alright. Um... As you approach deeper into the chamber, you immediately spot one enormous three foot tall rune covered in what appears to be covering what appears to be a door hewn from a single sheet of volcanic glass, so thin that it's nearly translucent. Again, nobody understands what the rune says, um, but it's very, very large. That looks pretty fragile. I'm sure we could smash it with enough force. But do we want to smash it? I want to. <laughs> Let's look around. Is the door blocking the only way forward? Yes. We could see if it opens rather than making more noise. We might consider backing up. I have no idea what that rune does, but I'm sure it can't be good. Hmm, be my guest. Sure. Um, you three back up. I'll go to the door. I'll see if it. I'll kind of like poke it with the end of the mace to see if I can like okay. push it gently open. As soon as you poke the rune, okay, it begins to glow with a reddish hue. And a low, gravelly voice echoes throughout the chamber. Speaking in common, it says, Who watches the world burn? And as the voice emanates, the stone altar in the room above slides into place sealing you into the chamber. I'll toss it. Cyric. Okay. Um, as you, you answer, the braziers in the, broom, in the room burst into flame, and the air becomes full of choking smoke. From the now smoldering bowls, a handful of small winged figures of fire claw their way free and move towards you malice burning in their eyes go ahead and roll initiative and hey now get out of there That's supposed to be. Sorry. I would have killed you with that other accommodation. <laughs> uh.
Okay. So, the small devil made of magma is going to get to go first. Um, as it begins to approach you, as it begins to approach you, yep, 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 yep. Um, it's going to walk right up to to you and then oh um, it is going to slash at you with its claws with its claws and it missed and it's sad and then it's quiver's turn uh, top enemy longbow Top enemy longbow twenty six. Twenty six uh, will hit. Eleven damage. Oh dear. Okay. And I'll back up as far as I can. Move here and I'll shoot the one that just got shot. Longbow 15 is a hit. Okay. And then I'm done. Frey. Frey is going to shoot a firebolt on the smoking one. And that's it. Okay. Um... The fire hits it and does nothing. You see, okay. it, it almost uh, seems to enjoy taking the the fire damage. Damn it! <laughs> All right, this one here is going to fly around. It's going to position itself right there, and then. Yeah, yeah. Go find a bucket of water. It is going to use its cinder breath and exhale a cone of smoldering ash. Each creature in that area makes a dex check, dex save, or is blinded until the end of the Mephit's next turn. Frey passes. Whoever. He's just outside the... No. Look at my arrow. It's definitely touching his token. 15.1. How is that cheating? I'm measuring. How is that not measuring properly? You have to hold alt. Because it's measuring from the center of your square. Not to the edge. Yeah. Just make the roll. Hey. And eyeball. All right, that was his turn. Second one is going to come up. And right there. And it's just going to try to claw at you. And fail. All right. I am just going to take a swig at the one in front of me. I'm not going to take a swing. Oh my me. god, man! I, I I've got like five ones tonight. It's bad. Mm hmm. All 
All right, the Mifet. Oh, uh, the Mifet is going to try to claw at Mender. Nope, no claw. Quiver. All right, I'm gonna move down there, and I'm going to take a shot at the one that blinded me. Where I think it is, anyway. Uh huh. So it's a disadvantage. And I will, uh. Set. Oh my god. Yeah, 24 is a hit. So, 5 damage. Yep. Finished? Yep. Paris. Did I hit it? So technically, if I move here, am I still in his range? What do you mean his range? Within five feet? <laughs> that's that's different from being adjacent. Like, the breath comes from the front of the unit. Like, not from the center. I'm going to hit it with my right pair. Twelve damage. All right. And that's it. Free. I'm afraid we try to grab the thing with... and give it a chalk. <laughs> Okay, that is a hit. The Mephit is going to die. However, <coughs> when the Mephit dies, um, new, 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 new. shape. You see that its form bursts, and there is now a a big cloud. That is heavily obscuring the area. It's okay. it's choking your lungs. Then I'll move out. <laughs> Let me see. Somewhere where that will be happy. Here. Yep. What? That's it. Why would that make me happy? Hmm, <laughs> you'll see. <laughs> Alright, uh that was the end of the Mephit's next turn, so you were also Oh no, Mephit didn't take a turn yet. Now it's their turn. So then you won't be blind anymore. This Mephit here is going to attack Varus. Slash it. 15? Miss. Okay. Uh, Mender? I'm going to circle around and take a swipe. Hit? Yeah. You did it, buddy. We got one. You're the we best. We did it, Reddit. Around. Yep. We did it, Reddit. Uh, Magma Mephit. It is going to circle around you. And you know what? It's tired of not hitting you, too. So it's just going to use its fire breath in this direction. Ramp. Deck save, please. That's a pass. So you are going to take three fire damage. Ooh wee. All right, and then quiver. It is your turn again. I blink the whatever what out out of my eyes. I look around. I see another steamy boy and, and attack him. <laughs> Or seven. And I'll have to move closer. Alright, Varus. Okay. Stab. Ten is a miss. A miss. Yep. Okay, I'm done. Frey. 
Frey is moving here and we'll take a shot with her crossbow. Let's see. Magma. Okay. And that's it. Uh, smoke Mifa right here. Again, attacking Varus for lack of anything better to do. Hey, yeet. Take three. Why are you moving around? Get back up there. I was getting ahead myself. Uh, okay. Mender. Fourteen is a hit for eight. Yeah, that's it. Next round, Magma Mephit. Slash at you one more time. And fail. Quiver? This time I'll attack the Magma Mephit. It's a hit. Six. And I'm done. Alright, uh, when the Fire Mephit dies... You see it bursts in an explosion of flame and lava. Uh, Mender, take another another deck save. All right, you're gonna take two fire damage. A little bit splashes on you. Verse. One more step. Uh, that's a hit, and he's wow. dead. You don't even have to roll because you're. Your mods will kill it. And same as with the other one, when it dies, poof! Explosion of ash and dust fills the chamber. Are we still choking on the smoke from before? What? I, uh, I thought there was some uh, choking smoke. That in was the air, that was the Mephits materializing. Okay. Okay. Um, with the Mephits defeated, the fiery essence of the runes dulled back down to the color of normal stone. And the stone slab unseals of its own accord, uh, leading, further, leading further into the tomb. Well, let's keep going. Yeah, okay. I mean, if we're not trying to be sneaky, I'll take the lead. I'm trying to step down here. You always like to go and run off screen. Uh, heading through the door leads you into a 10 foot wide hallway with three rooms on each side and a set of iron double doors at the end of the hallway. So I think I'm going to motion to quiver like silently, um, like looking at the door like to see if he can put his ear to it. And I'll just stay still. Okay. I'll sneak up to the door on the left and listen in. Uh, nothing. You hear nothing. And then to the one on the right? You, you don't hear anything. And then the middle one, and I hear nothing, and I report back, and I say, I hear nothing. You know you can see into the rooms, right? There are iron bars that cover the, the, the entrances. Only the door oh. at the end of the hall. I heard double doors. That, those are the doors at the end of the hall. So are they like six empty cells? cells? Yes. Three rooms on each side. Iron bars. Yeah. <laughs> like, hmm. Nope, there's nothing in this empty room, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was asked to go and put my ear up to it. I, so I know! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I misunderstood too. I thought they were doors. Um, 
I'll take a quick peek. Peek. I just, I just, that feels like a trap. I want perception check. On what? What are you perceiving? If there's something that he didn't see. Wait, like in the rooms? Yeah. Okay. Because you guys didn't even look in the, like, you're confusing me. Um, <laughs> when you look in the rooms, you can see that they're currently being used as a living quarters. Every room contains a crude bunk of wood and hay, a weapon rack, an armor stand, and a metal chest. Three of the chests are uh, ajar and empty. And uh, that that's what the rooms look like. Hmm. Well, there's three that aren't ajar and maybe have something in them. Do you uh, want to take a look? I'll go post up by the double doors, but not open them. Just ready if anything comes through. Would I happen to see any kind of a symbol like resembling the tattoo that the burnt girl had? Um, there's all kinds of strange symbols throughout the chambers, but you can't recognize any of them. Okay. So, can I check the unopened, unopened chests? The chests are locked. Well, they are locked. And I don't think I can open them or break them if anyone has an idea. No? Leave them behind. Mm -hmm. All right, I guess if we're all ready, we can go through. Okay, let's go then. All right, I'm going to open the door. All right. Um, this immense chamber is oddly shaped, almost like a flame. At the far end, an enormous 10-foot-wide brazier burns fiercely. Surrounding the brazier, a group of people stand chanting, wearing nothing but heavy leather breeches and aprons, and sporting thick, opaque goggles. Sweat courses from their bare shoulders in the stifling room. A familiar-looking woman stands on a raised platform on the far side of the brazier. Beside her, on the platform, is what appears to be a set of rather large bronze armor. Seemingly fresh from the forges, it still glows red with heat. A man takes a cautious step towards the armor, but recoils in pain at the last moment, likely from the intense heat. The two workers behind him, however, anticipate the move and shove him bodily into the suit. The gut-wrenching sound and smell of burning flesh and hair fills the air as the suit's occupant screams in unfathomable agony. Smoke roils and curls from, curls from gaps in the armor as tendrils of flame begin to rise from the neck. Within moments, the cultist's entire head is wreathed in flame. After a dozen terrible heartbeats, the last of his screams fade away. However, to your surprise, the unholy creation animates and leaps into the brazier, drawing a huge red-hot warhammer from within as it, at, before it begins moving in your direction. Oh no! Oh no! Here we go. I'm gonna move forward. Prepare to battle. Ba, 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 ba. Release the girl. Uh, I think the girl is one of them, actually. Yeah, you you see, uh, you see her Ravia with, with her whole half side burnt. Um, she is one of the cultists there. And and she's easily recognizable because of all the burns and markings. Um, the five cultists that were with the creature, they are consumed by flame as the uh, Azer animates and approaches you. 
So, can everybody roll initiative yet? Roll initiative. Take her alive. You can't take her alive. She's dead. She was consumed. Oh, she, she was she consumed dead too? by flame. Ah, oh, okay. Wait, was it her that was in the armor? No. She was no, with just the other cultists. Let me read it again. It says, A familiar looking woman stands on a raised platform on the far side of the brazier. Beside her is what appears to be a set of a rather large bronze armor. Man, A man takes a cautious step towards the armor and recoils in pain. However, the two workers behind him throw him into the armor. So a man went into the armor. It wasn't her. When she was standing next to it. Mm. <laughs> Did you all roll initiative? Who hasn't rolled yet? I'm confused. I mean, is, is she's she a man? Room now. <laughs> I'm not judging. <laughs> I mean, what does she identify as? Oh. <laughs> Pray it's no, no, more, no more trolling. No yeah, more. It's a good way for me to just walk away from this game. Like, it's your turn, Frey. Oh, okay. So Frey's going to just attack with the crossbow and move Q. That's it. Okay. After that, Varus. Yes. Um. Pew pew. Hit. And move here, and I'm done. Mender. Thirteen is a miss. Yeah, that's my turn. Cover. Okay, so I'm gonna move. And I'm going to try and hit it with a longbow. All right, I think that hits. Twenty. That's a hit. Uh, I'd like to try a maneuver, the trip attack. A DC 13 versus strength. Okay, he trips. Uh, 12 damage, and he is prone. Or he would be, but it's his turn, so he's going to stand right back up. Okay, so he's going to take his Warhammer with two hands. And he's going to try and smack Mender and succeeds. Take 10 damage. Try and shrug it off. Wow. That is a hell yeah, of a Yeah, no. Alright, Frey? Frey is going to shoot another crossbolt. And that's it. And Varus? Pew pew. And dead. That's kind of lame. Alright, anyway. Um, a little, little anticlimactic. Yeah, well, it said to remove the five cultists because you're a weak party. Thank you. All right. Um, so, creature is dead. What are you guys gonna do? Mm, I don't know. Look around, see if we find some gold, some thing that might prove that she was a cultist too. I'll, I'll help you look around. I'm gonna step away from this boiling suit of armor.
Okay. When you say you're going to look around, I'm going to assume that you are going to check their pockets. You find a key yeah. on, on uh, Rabia, on the girl. Mm, a key? So... Hey, remember those chests we found back there? Yeah, that was what I was thinking. I'll go back to the chests and try one by one, see if it opens any of them. Okay. Um, it does open one of them, and you find a journal bound in oiled leather, 95 gold pieces, and a potion of healing. Okay. So... Can we read anything? the journal? Yeah. Ab absolutely. Um, two pages make reference to a devastation orb. Ravia did not know much about the orbs, so the journal is silent on their creation or their use. But she does mention the rumor that the items can supposedly summon destructive energies equal to that of a large firestorm or a volcano. One page describes Ravia's plans to receive cargo in Elmwood and transport it to Molemaster. The timetable fits with the destruction of Elmwood during Ravia's visit. And several entries mention a plan to forcibly recruit worshippers of the Eternal Flame through the use of a magical staff and a ritual circle. Early experiments apparently result in a complete annihilation of the subject's consciousness, but later entries indicate that the process may have finally been perfected. And the last entry mentions a pet hawk, implying that there is a traitor within the organization that may work with the cult of Eternal Flame. Well, hell. That's a lot of info. We should get this back to Zora. There's still two chests that are left unopened. The key you... to only fits the one chest. Yeah. We try to bash the locks in. I have a crowbar if we want to force them. Yeah. Okay, DC 20. Can I assist? Sure. Well, what's assisting going to do? He's already got advantage because of the crowbar. Oh, okay. The strength? Yep. Fail. No, no, fail. Okay. Do you I'm want me to try? Strong. All right, heading back to town. Can we carry the chests? Heading back to town. <laughs> okay. Heading back to heading town. Back to town. Uh, when you go to uh, Zora, she invi invites you to stay with her tonight so you can relate to her every detail of your investigation. Um, she's thankful for your parts in saving her. Um, any characters that are arcane spellcasters, which would just be Frey at this point, yeah, will get the to wear the cloak uh, favor. Um, after arriving and telling her about the cloak and everything else, um. 15 soldiers arrive accompanying a man named Tolliver. He demands that they turn over the journal, claiming that it was it, it is needs to be used for an internal investigation into the Hawks. Um, Zora appears quite frightened and turns it over immediately. Uh, let's talk about rewards. Uh... You guys are each going to get 450 XP. You guys are going to get... Did not, did not. You did not kill the city guard and get a bonus. Did not do any of those things. 
Total of 370. So 92 gold each. Then there is a potion of healing that is uh, floating around. Um, Who is going to take that? I can take it. I, I I would like it. Just roll for the potion. I'm sure everybody wants. All right, Ferris gets potion. And everybody gets one renown point, 10 downtime days. And to wear the cloak. Uh, this will be given to Frey. And Frey only. Okay. Um, thanks everybody for coming and hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed yourselves and uh, I'll see you later.